Hi there, name's Barry Brush Tinkle. Nice to meet you. You're likely looking into starting a career as a vlogger. Most people do it. When I walk on the streets, it's like, excuse me, I know you want to vlog here. There's so many of us. A lot of people do it. It's fun. I love the criticism I get in the comment section. It's fun times. It's like, oh, your hair. You gonna do something with that? What's wrong with these slopes? Those are good. Those are good. Maybe not. Why did the one now? What do I do with that one? Ah. Bring him friends to hang out with. I'm beautiful. So I've made a list. These are the best vlogging cameras right now from someone who's actually vlogged, not some old ass man photographer who has a show somehow. He's like, oh, we could vlog too. These are the best vlog, the M50. You don't need stabilization. And in color, dynamic range, that's not important. I'll give you the budget hobo camera, and then we'll move up to that dreamland. All I want is the perfect camera. All I want is the perfect camera. And before we get started here, we have some good camera information coming, but I would not trust you to hold some of these heavier suggestions if you didn't have the Q-Link potential flowing through your body right now due to the two for one sale we have going on down below. You click that link, you add two to the cart. Buy one, get one free. How do we beat it? I don't know. The increase in energy that you will feel unmeasurable by Scientology. Sales going on till Wednesday midnight. You miss it, that's on you. This honestly, it increases your energy, more mental focus, better sleep. It does magical things. We don't need to talk about it here. You guys don't care. You eat hot dogs and shit. You're photographers. You don't know what you're doing. I get it. For my other channel, people are more in the know. They're like, oh, okay, I'll try that. What's that noise? So my first recommendation depends on what kind of phone you have. You might have something that's spectacular and upgrading to some of these, it's not even an upgrade, it's a downgrade in many ways. So depending on your phone, if you have a wide angle, you get a little mic jack on there, you can't really beat it. It's very easy. So I will say, I will recommend the best of the phones is that Huawei P40 Pro. Maybe the Mate 40 Pro still waiting on my order. PDA Plaza, anytime now. Two months ago, I ordered that thing. It was a Canadian site. They ordered that thing from China. It's on a ship right now, and it sunk like the Bismarck did in 1946. The main problem with smartphones is they're oversaturated. They're over sharpened at times. They do weird flashing in the sky. If you're a UFO fanatic and you don't mind flashbacks to when you were abducted as a child, hitting you every episode, go with a smartphone. And the variable frame rates, sometimes your audio will be out of sync. Like they're not great, but if you already have one, I wouldn't buy the, the Huawei, that thing? What was it, 900 used? This new one, $1,500 I spent on that. You could get almost anything better. Don't go that route. But if you have one, use it. The reason I recommend the Huawei mainly because they have the biggest sensors in the wide angle and they have that 7,000. My cat's freaking out. Let's do it. This is gonna look like trash, but if she does jump down, this will be good content. She's not jumping, so I'm gonna trigger it. And if she jumps in that box, we'll get it. So Huawei is the top of the list for me, but you could get by with a Samsung S10. You don't need to get the S21 Ultra. Like it, they didn't improve their wide angle camera at all. So wait for the improvements. iPhone users are criminals. So I don't really have, I didn't put a lot of thought or effort into your decision making. You'll be in prison one day and you follow the flock of sheep off a cliff as long as it's shiny enough. Now moving on from smartphones, because they're honestly not great, it's just that you might already have a good one. If you want to upgrade, and this is an upgrade, you gotta go action cams. That's the easiest. It's cheap, it's light, it's small, every single one. You don't need a mirrorless, it's so stupid. It's just sometimes, the hell are those noises? Sometimes you want a bit of an increase in quality. An Avoidy Lander. 35mm 1.2. This is now my favorite lens. I will never use another lens. I was laughing at it. I humored Flat Earth Santa by using it. I was like, okay, I'll use it. He said to keep it. I fell in love. I just bought a little Black Pro Mist thing for it. 
and a strange thing for this lens. You would not believe. Did we get it? It definitely recorded. Is it? That is the dumbest shot I've ever got. <laughs> oh my god, it's way too slow. And so blocky and weird. <laughs> it looks like he's not even moving. Oh, I should have set it to 1900 frames. That's on me. Now this hurts to even mention, but the Sony X3000 is still likely your best shot. It's still, it's so small. I love that form factor. And it's so simple, there is no screen. You don't need one. You never needed it. It's just a little annoying to switch into slow motion, but the stave is good. The only problem is that thing is not cheap. It's not like that is, it's not even a budget thing. It's still like $600. I don't understand it. It's like more expensive than the GoPro 9, I think. Like, what are you doing, Sony? Is that why you're not making them? Because you sell them for gold coins, gold bars? How many gold bars do you have in your house? But if you can find one for cheap, it's hard to beat that thing. Had good 1080p. I, that's all I ever used. Fantastic. Optical stave. None of this digital weird stuff where you're shaking in the shot. If you can't find that thing, you might, might go with a GoPro 7. Hear me out. The 9? You're out of focus. The DJI Osmo Action, also out of focus. The Insta360 one inch, out of focus. Thanks for making three vlogging cameras that are focused on the world and not the important star of the show. I don't get it. That's why I don't, I get so many comments about these cameras. What about that? You're not in focus. It has to be in the action. That's the worst of all, because you would have to extend it on a tripod to be in focus and it doesn't have a tripod mount. You have to put it in the cage, then every time. Ow, ow, wrist. Oh, I have wrist aids. The GoPro 8 looked fantastic, but the media mod, that's the only advantage over the 7. And it's glitchy, it ruined all my files. I'm afraid, I kinda wanna buy the GoPro 9 media mod, but I'm not going down that road again. So the 7, you just deal with the audio, you get a little wind muff on it and then it's a pocketable solution. And GoPro 7 had the most natural colors. They ruined it in the 8 and then they copied the 8 in the 9. Just oversaturated surfer shit. If I was picking one today, I had, I was forced at gunpoint to buy one of those. I'd probably get the DJI action and just deal with having a soft face, teenage girl like skin. I don't mind that. And then you get that little Sonova mic jack that's the pocketable camera you could get. And it's pretty cheap. I saw it for like 250 Canadian. It's like 14 cents. When it comes to the DJI Pocket 2, it's fantastic, but it hunts, it focus hunts. It's weird, it could break. You can't just put it in a pocket. The wide angle adapter is a gimmick that should have been on fully solid with glue. I just, uh, the hissy preamps. Oh, just use the wireless and beam radiation at your neck. You want thyroid AIDS? You just get Bluetooth neck disease? No, thank you. And then that's another battery you got to worry about. That whole, I didn't even take that out of the box. I also didn't like the over sharpened image that you can't change. It just, it looks cheap. It has that small sensor look because it is a small sensor. So it's hard to recommend that. There's not much advantage over one of the pocketable ones. It's a weird pocket thing you gotta do. So if the autofocus was better and you didn't need that long ass handle for the mic jack, just have one in the body, the gimbal would have to lock and a little cap. You need a lens cap on that thing. Just a tiny little thing. It locks, boom, small. I'm used to small thing. For the most part though, it's a great camera. I just, it wasn't for me. I didn't like the whole feel of it. I didn't feel motivated. The slow motion was a super crop and just didn't look right. Wouldn't follow a squirrel. That's a big mistake. So there's your action pocketable stuff. If you want to move on, increase your game a little bit. 
it's hard to, I would say, Olympus EM1 Mark II, same shit. Same as this. If you can find it much cheaper than the three, you go for that. Because the only thing you're missing is slow motion, which is not very good. And that's a big irk. I want that super slow. But if you're talking about just getting the most stable image with good autofocus, amazing colors, like that's it. And it's lightweight, pretty cheap. You get the 12 mil Tony two, that's the lens. You don't go super wide, that nine, to 18 or something. It's like a Tony 4.5. Things like a thousand dollars. That looks like a kit lens. Piece of shit. Tony 8 or 9 equivalent. You can't do that. Tony 4 equivalents is the max. That's the cutoff point. 5.6, you lost the magic. So that 12 mil Tony 2 is a Tony 4 equivalent, Tony wise. And it's magical enough. I got lots of compliments on it. People are like, that's a good amount of Tony. That's just, just enough. That's nice. I can see what's in the background. People are blurred for safety reasons. If you want to stay in Micro Four Loser Thirds territory as he artfully comes out of focus and back in on the Voidy Lander whenever he wants to, you get the G9 with a manual focus lens. Don't even try it. Unless their vlog grip has that autofocus, but there's not a wide enough lens for this piece of shit system. The wide lenses, they wobble. So this is the Laowa 7.5 mm Tony II. You just ha you have to go really slow. You can't really walk. So don't even think about it. But if you just stop and talk to it, this has a really good look. I like it a lot. Just don't move. As long as your vlogs are slow and focused on senior citizen technology, you'll get by with this thing. You got amazing slow motion, pretty good dynamic range for a tiny, micro loser sensor that's probably the lens i'd go for because every other lens will let you down the leica 12 mil 21.4 you'll lose focus hard the leica this little guy i can't give this away it's too cute but it will lose your ass hard just whatever you do don't try to autofocus on this camera or any panasonic ever it will let you down for christmas now, if I'm being honest with you, nothing on this list can even compete with that Olympus. So I don't know why I mentioned that first. It's all downhill from here on out. But you could get a Nikon Z50. It's not gonna look as good. The autofocus is nice. It performs. There's just, you only have the kit lens. It's a Tony 3.5. It's a downgrade from the Olympus, even though it's a bigger sensor don't get it. I'm just giving you options here for each system. If you want Nikon, that's your one. You could go with the Z6. I've seen it on sale. A lot of sales. I kind of want to pounce, but I haven't seen the 14 to 24 on sale. That hurts. Little side tangent. I just ordered the Samyang 14 mil Tony two manual focus. It was like 300 bucks. If it's good, I'll consider the Sigma 14 to 24 or the Samyang Autofocus 14 2.8. It's probably bullshit. Too wide, too heavy. But we're gonna test it. I almost pounced on that Fuji 8 to 16. They lowered the price again, $1,430 Canadian. What is that? $1,124 US for that lens. But it was too stupid. It was too big, not enough tone, not worth it. So somebody bought it. But I have a feeling the Nikon Z6 original, you don't need the Mark II. They didn't do much in it for video. 14 to 24, it might be, it's that lightest of the 14 to 24s. It's pretty light. It's somewhat doable. No flippy screen, but it would look good. I think it'd be stable enough. Good autofocus, good colors, no log. But you got a flat profile. It could work. It's over sharpened. Nikon is stupid sharp digitally, fakely, it's not good. Or the 20 mil kit lens. That's not a kit lens. The 20 mil 1.8, it's not quite as light as the Sony 20 mil 1.8, but it'll get you by. I just wanna give you options for each company. If it was Canon, if you had to succumb to the hammer, I would probably go with the original EOS R or RP. 
I just, I don't like the battery life in that RP and the line skippy 1080p hertz. I would much rather have the R, but it is heavier and more expensive. We've seen that the R5 and R6 IBIS ruins that 15 to 35 lens. So you have to go with their older bodies that don't have that. So you could have a decent vlog there. It's heavy, but there's your Canon color science and your cripply features. Seen you in a while. I'm recommending a camera. I liked the R5. I wish I had it. It's the color science. But look what we're looking at here. You could. It's good. I'll buy one. The Sony R A1 destroyed your entire. Life. Was that because I said R1? The G7X line, the autofocus is shit. I wouldn't even look at it. The M6 Mark II with the kit lens might be okay. The 11 to 22 is too shaky. I think the kit lens has better stabe. You could do that and it wouldn't be very fun. When it comes to Fuji, I kind of have a hard time recommending them for vlogging because the autofocus performs worse than a Panasonic with most lenses. It's just not something you can really do. You can put that Samyang 12mm Tony 2 on it, and then you're in control of the autofocus. The IBIS isn't very good though. Like it doesn't really do anything you want it to the best. It just, it'll give you really good dynamic range, uh, amazing image, colors, slow motion. It has so much potential if they just polish things up a notch and make a better wide angle lens. It's not a third party dancer. X-T4 obviously, but you could hobo it down a notch to the X-S10. It's basically the same image, better autofocus, just the battery life hurts. I hate these budget models with the dinky battery, last 14 minutes. When it comes to Sony, you gotta understand that Sony has the worst IBIS in the game. So anything APS-C full frame, like it's hard to recommend for vlogging. The only one you can recommend is the Sony A7S three with the active stabe unless you want to put the time in to stabilize with the catalyst brows if you want to like daily vlog and you're doing that every single video it'll wear on you don't do it to yourself so you could get the a7c and do that but without it like the a7 III, i look back when i first got the a7 III, which is a dedicated photo camera now don't even dare take a video with it it was so shaky I was in denial. I was like, this is probably good enough if you're careful. It's never good enough. So you can't really get like the Sony a6600 with the 10 to 18, even though it's dual stabe, it's too shaky still. And that's a Tony six. What are you doing? You could go the ZV-1 route. If you get a real long tripod, you don't mind extending it way out there. It's somewhat acceptable. It's 32 mil lens designed for vlogging. It's kind of shaky. It looks okay. It's decent. You got fun slow-mo modes that can't autofocus on you, but you could get some magic. It's a decent one. So if the sad reality is none of these cameras are designed for vlogging, just walking and talking. It's a simple concept. Nobody's doing it from scratch and it hurts. I wish a company would just, okay, let's make every little thing. They're turning action cams into vlogging potential cameras. Or mirrorless, okay, we could do that. Just design it from the beginning and I better be in on that meeting. I swear to God. So, do you have a better suggestion? Because I don't think there is. I have not seen it. Let me know down below if I'm wrong. I doubt it. Thank you for buying a camera conspiracy t-shirt down below and a Q-Link pendant two for one. You'll feel it or you'll feel this fist in your gut. Okay, I'll leave. Subscribe for more videos. See you next